So those are the three lenses I've got for you today. A 50mm f2, a 24mm f2.8 and a 70 to 210, 4.5 to 5.6. They're all lovely lenses. So if you want to see how to get really cheap lenses that make really nice images, check out the video. Well, hey everybody, thank you for checking in once again and welcome to another episode. Well, like me, you may be a little bit dismayed at how quickly the prices of some vintage lenses have risen over recent years. Some of them are rather fancy ones, others are not terribly fancy and uh, you can see that there are a lot of cheeky sellers out there asking for rather high prices but I'm gonna today bring you a series of lenses that bucks that trend and seems hardly if at all to have moved in price well almost since the day they were made actually they're not big name lenses they don't have big name lenses like Canon or Nikon or Olympus on the front they're third party lenses and if I show you one of them you might be able to see the name on the cap there is Miranda it's the Miranda line of lenses now I must point out that the word Miranda means wonder in Latin and these lenses are something of a wonder they work really really nicely when you get a good one the point is with these is to get a good one um, like a lot of vintage lenses there is some in poor condition but there are a lot of these a lot of these that were bought by um, sort of uh, Sunday photographers if you like photographers who love their gear who like making images but who didn't use it very much and uh, I think a lot of this Miranda gear might have got stowed away and just not used very much and those are the ones you want the ones that are in still pretty much as new condition being stored well and not having been used very much now I should say this is not these are not lenses from the original Miranda company the original Miranda company was a company of the 1950s I think certainly the 1960s <clears throat> they made very similar cameras to the Pentax cameras actually they were very big heavy metal things and they had very beautiful lenses of their own on them these are not those lenses or cameras the, the entire Miranda name was sold to a retail chain a UK retail chain called Dixon's in the late 1970s and they sold uh, Miranda branded gear um, usually made by Cosina actually they usually got the uh, equipment made by Cosina as I believe you may know better if you do put it down in the comments down below and let me know but as far as I'm aware these lenses were usually made by Cosina Cosina have been much manufacturing lenses for many 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 years they're a very widely respected lens manufacturer they've made lens manufacturers they've made lenses I should say for pretty much anybody and everybody Nikon, Olympus, you name it Miranda have made lenses for and don't forget they were uh, Cosina rather have made lenses for and don't forget they were responsible for the rather wonderful Cosina range finders of the late 90s early 2000s so this these lenses although they were cheap and although they're still cheap they're nice lenses and they're made by a good quality manufacturer and I've got three of them to show you today put my glasses on and I'll tell you which ones they are this is the one I bought the first this one I bought a couple of years ago this is the Miranda 70 to 210 and it's a push-pull zoom lens uh, this 
is the Miranda 24 millimeter f 2.8 that I bought just a couple of months ago. I haven't had this one very long, bought this on an OM30 fairly recently. And this one here is the Miranda 50 millimeter f2. And this is a lens that a great many photographers will have bought and used over the years so those are the three lenses i've got for you today a 50 mil f2 a 24 millimeter f2.8 and a 70 to 210 4.5 to 5.6 they're all lovely lenses so if you want to see how to get really cheap lenses that make really nice images check out the video okay so lens number one today the first one i'm going to show you today is this 50 millimeter f2 from Miranda. This is a beautiful little lens. It's very nicely made. I think I think much of the construction is plastic. I do understand that the focusing helix and all the internal important components are brass and metal, so I don't think there's any problem there. But the exteriors do sound like plastic. That doesn't sound or indeed feel, doesn't have the coldness of metal, doesn't feel like metal either. If you know better, tell me different. But I think these lenses are made of plastic. They're no worse for that because that means they're very light and they're very small. Uh, it does mean that they're a little brittle and they can break if you drop them, but shouldn't ever be dropping your lenses anyway so um, make sure not to drop them is all I can say let's have a uh, a little look at this one more closely before we continue so there's our little Miranda f2 lens there and I think you'll probably be able to see one of the reasons why it can make such nice images is because of those purpley bluey coatings it's got there I've found that any kind of shade of purpley bluey coatings tends to make an en a lens make a nice image and it certainly does in this case. I've found that to be the case on lots of other lenses as well. I don't know if it's entirely responsible but it does seem to be of some help. You'll see it's marked with the Miranda logo there and uh, it's somewhere around here marked 50 mil f2 not engraved unfortunately because these were cheap lenses it's only printed but the printing seems to have stood the test of time there's the side view i'll take it off the adapter this one's pk mount because that was quite common I'll take it off the adapter there and there you can see it's a very small lens it does extend a little bit as we go towards the minimum focus distance which isn't terribly uh, near in this example it's five uh, or 0.5 of a meter or 50 centimeters which isn't terribly close but it's close enough um, everything works very smoothly the focus ring turns very very smoothly this one's clearly not had a lot of use not been terribly uh, well used the aperture ring is at the back they are all a little bit clunky and clanky on these the aperture rings they don't move terribly smoothly and they don't have half stops but they do work fine and they're no worse than the Konica uh, lenses which have similarly surprisingly similarly clunky aperture mechanisms there's the rear of the lens not a great deal to see there except more of the purpley coatings and the pk mount and there's the other side and there again is the front of the lens this is a beautiful little lens and they're available very very cheaply i'll open up the aperture so you can see all the way through the lens and there we are and it's a nice clear one this one it doesn't have any fungus any dust any horribles or nasties to make it not work properly this is the kind of Miranda lens you want one that's not been used terribly much so 
there's our little Miranda lens in close up and now let's have a little chat about what it can do well sharpness I was amazed and stunned at this lens's sharpness all right it's only an f2 it doesn't open very wide and as an f2 something that doesn't open terribly wide it has some inherent sharpness but I wouldn't have thought that much and I certainly wouldn't have thought as much as three as a 3.5 and I most certainly wouldn't have thought as much as it actually has I would have expected it to be somewhere around the softness of a Jupiter 8 for example but clearly this is a much later lens design it's designed by Cosina a company who knew what they were doing and made a quality product for Dixons to sell to their consumers and this really is a quality product the sharpness is quite amazing let's see if I can put the thing back on while I'm talking to you the sharpness is quite amazing color is really really nice as well this has a lovely delicate touch it's not too pale it's not too saturated or in your face but it just strikes the balance somewhere nicely in between and it does give a really really nice image in terms of color it's I would say probably somewhere on the cool side of things it's not particularly cool uh, it's not particularly warm but it's somewhere on the cool side of things I would have thought which I kind of like I like a kind of cool look to a lens I think it's beautiful this one gives beautiful colors far far nicer than I was expecting I must admit I was expecting this to be a bit muddy, a bit flat, a bit bleh, a bit, you know, meh. I've run out of words, but never mind. I wasn't expecting it to be terribly good, but I was very, very surprised. It's a really nice lens. This is a lens that makes really nice blur as well. Blur is lovely from this lens. It has a lovely, soft, velvety, creamy quality and it's very difficult to find any harsh spots within it there are one or two that appear somewhere now and again especially when there are straight lines involved but they're very easy to shoot around and they don't happen very often so this is a lens that will make you some really nice background blur and with a minimum distance of 0.5 meters well at the minimum focus distance you're going to make loads of background blur as much as you like and so this can be a lens that's nice for portraits this lens will make you a nice portrait and if you shoot it wide open you can still get some separation between your subject and your background at distances of up to about six to eight feet or thereabouts you'll still get some separation separating your subject from your background so that's nice so this is a lens with very very nice inherent blur if you find a good one of these at a good price buy it you can find one of these around about 20 pounds less if you're patient and they're well well worth it just make sure to get one that's not been used terribly much right ladies and gents boys and girls the next lens I have to show you is this one this is the 70 to 210 Miranda I don't know if it has any fancy name or any fancy series no it's just called the Miranda 70 to 210 MC macro it says well these lenses very often do say macro on them and they can usually get reasonably close but there is no way that they are a macro lens one to four is the biggest magnification that this one has so it's not even a one to two macro but it can get you some nice close-up shots at the long end you have to push it towards the long end the short end won't do it but if you push it towards the long end you'll get some nice close-up shots now then these lenses were everywhere at one time these were sold as a sort of a do-it-all solution if you didn't want to buy prime lenses there was a short zoom you could buy I think it was about something like 35 to 70 or maybe 28 to 70 and then there was this 70 
to 210 to cover along the length. So as long as you had those two lenses, well, you were set for anything, at least in theory. Now, zoom lenses always have compromises built in, but these were later zoom lenses, so they don't have so many compromises. So whatever focal length you set this to, between 70 and 210, you are going to get a picture that's reasonably free of distortion and a reasonably nice technical image. And any technical problems that you do have in the lens probably won't show themselves unless you're given to shooting test charts, which personally I'm not. I just enjoy a vintage lens for what it is, quirks and all. So here we are, a 70 to 210. We've got a very large range of focal lengths covered. Uh, it's a push-pull lens. Now, I do prefer the kind of zoom lens that you can twist and it will actually zoom because these push-pull ones do tend to develop a habit of not being able to stand up, if you'll pardon the expression, at the long end. And this one, I think, because of its years, displays that fault. <laughs> you'll see that it collapses under its own weight but that's all right because very rarely do you shoot straight up into the sky at the longest focal length let's have a quicker look at this lens a quick look at this lens rather in close-up while we can so here's the front of the lens and it's got a massive big front element and it does catch flares quite easily this one so it's best used with a hood you can see, I think, that it's got shades of purpley, bluey uh, coatings upon it, though this one does seem to have some greeny coatings upon it as well, though it's certainly got the purpley blue uh, shades that you can see just there, and that's nice. Um, it's very simply marked Miranda 70 to 210s, no particular series. As you can see, this one's in nice condition. It is a fairly long lens. When you put this on your camera, especially with an adapter, I think this one is a PK mount. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. It doesn't really matter too much. But when you put it on your camera with an adapter, uh, it will add about that much length to it. So you've got a fairly long rig. There is no doubt that using this lens you have got more camera, you've got more lens than you have camera. It's nicely marked, and if we look at the markings, you can see that you've got all the markings there. You've got the um, macro markings here. I think they're the macro markings, hold on. No, no, they're not. They're the uh, focal length markings. We've got the macro markings here, and you can see it goes up to one to four, which isn't enormous. We've got these lines here, which relate to depth of field and the depth of field you can rely on uh, uh, the various focal lengths, though I've never found that to be terribly helpful myself. Um, but it is a long lens. Uh, let's just take the back off and have a look at the rear mount. There's the rear mount. I'm pretty sure it's PK mount. Uh, can we see any coatings there? No, we can't see any particular coatings there. But there we are, the Miranda 70 to 210. Now then, as you will note, or as you will have noted, if you've been paying attention, <coughs> this is a fairly slow lens. It's an f4.5 at the short end, that is 70 millimeters. And it goes to f5.6 at the long end, that is uh, 210 millimeters. But don't think that you can't make too much blur with a lens like this, because you can. If you push this towards the long end, you will make as much blur as you want. And the blur is nice. It's soft, it's gentle. I must say these Miranda lenses do seem to have a nice quality of blur. 
Cosina or whoever did manufacture them, I'm fairly sure it was Cosina, but whoever manufactured them certainly knew what they were doing and they made sure that you get nice blur uh, at most subject to camera to background distances. So that's nice to know. Colour is nice, it's got a fairly pale representation, fairly low contrast look, but it's not flat, it's not lacking in energy, it's not it's not the kind of lens that you don't like the colours from. These are lively colours, these are bright colours, these are colours full of energy and life. Just because it's got a low contrast look doesn't mean that the colours are flat. They're not. They're absolutely beautiful. They're really, really nice colours. It does have a low contrast look, though. Um, it's on the cool side. These Miranda lenses tend to be, it seems, on the cool side of things, which suits me fine. Again, you'll see this one is in very nice condition. It's hardly been used. And I think that's why it's capable of making such nice images today. It's been stored well. It's not been stored in any environment when it can, where it can get damp and mouldy. And so it's got all its qualities today. It's got lovely colours. It's got lovely blur. And it's got nice sharpness too, which really it ought to because it's a, a, a relatively slow lens, f4.5 to f4.5. Uh, to f5.6 should have some inherent sharpness and in fact this one does. You can shoot this lens wide open all day and still get nice sharp images out of it. This is a really nice lens and again they're really cheap. Being a zoom it goes for even less than a prime and you'll find one of these for around £10 if you patient and if you're lucky they really are very 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 cheap indeed if you find a good one grab it you won't be disappointed and finally today of this three collection of miranda lenses we've got this lovely little cutie that i bought recently it was fixed to the front of an om30 that I couldn't resist it's a miranda 24 millimeter f something or other let me put my glasses on i think it's 2.8 yes 24 millimeter f 2.8 and <clears throat> this is now a really wide lens once you get past 28 you're getting into the super wide territory and this is where lenses tend to get really expensive especially if they're for full frame cameras as this one is well now this is a nice cheap one and i'm glad to say it gives very very nice results i won't talk about it too much because i've talked about it in a video fairly recently so that's there for all to see so i won't yet go on about it too much but it gives really really nice results such surprisingly nice results that i was astonished I hadn't expected it to be anything like as good as it is. I had expected it to be rather third, fourth, fifth rate, not to give great colours, not to be particularly sharp, not to have particularly nice blur. On all those counts, I was wrong. Let's have a closer look, just because we can. So there's our little Miranda 24mm and I think out of all the lenses you can see this one has got the most bluish greeny coating on it. It's got loads of that coating on it and I think that is partly responsible for why it makes such nice images. Let me take the back off so you can see through the whole way of the lens. I'll open it up so you can see through the whole way of the lens if you can. So there we are. Again, it doesn't shout about itself. It's of not of any particular series. It's just a Miranda. 1 to 2.8, 24mm. Nothing else to say for itself. No fancy serial name. No nothing. If we turn it sideways, we'll see it's a very small lens, this one. 
still has its past sticker on it so you know it's not been used very much and you know that not much wear has taken place in those internals and you know it's probably been stored very nicely as well everything turns nicely on this one the focus ring turns nicely it's a bit of an extender as you can see it extends about half an inch or something like that the aperture ring as always on these is a little bit clunky but as i say it's no more clunky than the Konica lenses that I've tried. They are very clunky and mechanical in their operation. Also, no half stops on these Miranda lenses. You can set them to half stops, but there are no half stop detent points where you know you've definitely found a half stop, but that's okay. Looking around the back, we can see what I'm fairly sure is an OM mount. In fact, I'm more than sure it's an OM mount because I got it from an OM camera. And there are the OM little uh, OM uh, thingies that you use to take it off with. There's the one around the other side that you use to unlatch it with. And there's the one that you use to close the aperture down with. You can see it's in beautiful condition. And let's take another look at those coatings. And there they are, all nice, glinting in the light. So there's our little Olympus 24mm f2.8, which takes images far nicer than anything I expected it to do. This is a beautiful lens. It has very little distortion, which is always nice in a wide lens because you can go close and the lines stay straight or more or less straight anyway in this case it can go down to a fairly small uh, minimum focus distance of let me have a look now 20 centimeters so that's really small so although you don't buy a lens like this to make blur you can make some blur with it and it's really delightful blur if you go very close to the subject 20 centimeters or so you get some really delightful blur out of this one and that blur will persist up to about two or three feet or so you get a little bit of separation if you shoot wide open remember this isn't a particularly fast lens it's only f 2.8 if it was f2 or f 1.4 you'd get more blur and more separation but that's not what this lens is for this lens is for recording big wide shots of big wide things full of air and space and light with very deep depth of field it does have the alternative it does have the possibility to go very close and make some blur if you want to to make some nice close-ups in fact it's even got the word i think rather optimistically macro emblazoned on the side there but it's not a macro lens by any means however it can make some nice close-ups so that's pretty good and this is a bit of a dual character lens and i think cosina or whoever it was who made it have built that into it to give it an extra audience appeal and it does give it an extra appeal as well so as well as being a lens that makes great big wide pictures of great big wide things it also makes little tiny pictures of little tiny things with loads of lovely blur in the back color is nice it's what can i say it's delicate in keeping with the house style there is our style with these lenses which makes me think even more that they were made by one manufacturer delicate colors not particularly strong not particularly saturated but by no means flat these are not muddy flat ugh, nah, sort of colors that you look at and you think oh my gosh why did i bother they're not that kind of color at all in fact even in dim light even in gray light these lenses will give you some nice colors they're not flat they're not lacking in energy they've got loads of depth they've got loads of life 
they're very nice indeed actually as for sharpness this one's really good um, it's inherently sharp as a 24 mil um, it's not particularly fast at 2.8 so if you use it as a wide lens to cover a wide area yeah you're gonna get loads of sharpness stop it down to f4 f5.6 is probably the sweet spot for this lens where you get most sharpness most contrast the best combination of image all around f5.6 is probably the sweet spot but then you lose out on the blur if you want to go for really close things so the way you use it really is up to you it's a lens that can do many 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 things so it's a great little optic i very very much recommend you buying one as for prices well, these can, I've seen these advertised around about £40, but they're not worth £40. They're worth about £20, £30, if that. Um, so I don't advise paying too much more than that. Go to £40 if you want, because it is very wide and we're now getting into super wide territory. And if you wanted a lens from one of the major manufacturers at 24mm, my gosh, it would cost you quite a lot more than £40. So maybe £40 is a reasonable upper limit. But don't go any more than that, please, because they're just not worth it. They're nice lenses, but they're, you know, they don't quite have the quality of a Nikon or a Canon or an Olympus in them, at least in their quality of manufacture anyway but a great little series of lenses and uh, three nice little uh, Miranda lenses that you can choose from so there we are that's it from me for this week another brand of lens for you to explore good luck good hunting and I hope it all goes well I hope this episode's been of some use I hope it's been enjoyable I hope you got something from it and I hope it's enriched your photographic life to some degree. Many, many thanks to subscribers. That's a heartfelt thanks to you for your support. If you've enjoyed this episode, chuck us a sub, that would be appreciated. Many, many thanks to patrons for your support. That is a genuine heartfelt thanks to you for your support and if you think this old hippie's not doing too bad a job of keeping this old gear alive keeping these old cameras these old lenses going and allowing us to use them on mirrorless giving us giving them a new lease of life then you might want to chuck us uh, a patreon support as well over at patreon w wait a minute what is it i ought to know this by now www.patreon.com com forward slash xenography and you can do that for a little as one dollar per week that would be appreciated as for me that's it from me for now if you're not doing anything too irksome bothersome or irritating next week at this time please do join me for a spot more xenography cheerio all <laughs>